Ladies and gentlemen, Redis Geeks and Gigettes, welcome to Redis Day. everyone, hi. Um, today I'm going to talk about five real-world use cases that we do with Redis that are powering the Datorama Query API. So I'm Google. I lead the platform team in Datorama R&D. You can find me online pretty much everywhere with the same username. A word about Datorama. So we are a marketing intelligence platform. And for the uninitiated, what does that mean? It means that if you're a marketer, you're doing digital marketing, and you're spending lots of budgets on Facebook and Google and Twitter and Snapchat and what have you, and you also have email marketing, and you have social listening and social media marketing, and you have this huge operation, lots of different data sources, lots of different platforms, and you want to aggregate everything into one place and gain insight on the holistic data set, then Datarama is the platform you need to use. A bit about our statistics. So, um, we process 5 billion rows daily, which is twice as much as we did last year when we were here, just to show the speed of growth. Um, we are executing 3.5 million queries a day. So for some people, that might sound like a, like a small number, but a Datarama query is, is a monster. It's hundreds of lines of SQL with joins and groups and sub-aggregations and sub-selects and, and window functions. And after the SQL, there's also a post in-memory calculation step, which is very uh, intensive. So it's a big deal. And we're pushing around 40,000 Redis calls per second. That's on average, but on peaks we get to much higher. So we have nice numbers. The Datorama Query API is a core service in our offering. It's used both by our customers and both internally by the microservices architecture. And what characterizes the service is that it's very, very intensive in, in pretty much all forms in terms of I.O., CPU, and RAM. It consumes a lot of everything. And the distributed architecture of the service sort of mandates that you need a mediating component in the middle, and Redis is the perfect pick for that. So, well, the metaphor was already used by Iftah before me, but I went the extra mile and branded the Swiss Army knife with the Redis logo. Um, and so I'd like to extend the notion that it's, it's a distributed system, it's a Swiss Army knife. And the five use cases that we're doing on it, and it's really nice to have just one tool to cover everything, is caching, queuing, Locking, throttling, and finally uh, pub subbing. So let's dive into the use cases. This is um, a simplified diagram of, of the architecture of the query API. So on the, I don't know, can you guys see the, the black writing there? It's like on the left side, there's a web server. On the right side, there's a query worker. It's a background worker. And obviously, this is a simplified diagram because there are multiple instances on each side. And then in the middle, we have the mediator, which is Redis. So the first use case, and uh, the classic one probably is caching. A request comes to the, to the web server and says, hey, I want to perform a query on, on, on my data set. A, a marketing query for context is something like, I want to get all my impressions, clicks, conversions um, broken down by campaign across Google, Facebook, uh, Snapchat, Twitter, grouped by country, by city, and by audience type, or something like that. So that's a fairly simple query, actually. And so the first thing we do with the query is that we hash it, and we look it up in our cache in Redis. We have a map of pre-executed queries. And if you have a cache, then great. Then we return it to the user. And what we're gaining here is twofold. So one thing we're gaining is obviously speed. We can react faster to the queries. And the second thing is that we're consuming less compute resources. We're not actually uh, letting the query into the entire system and, and you know, hitting the database and the data warehouse and all the instances in the middle. So second step is queuing. If we had a cache miss in the first step, what we do is we take the query, we wrap it in a message, and we, we also assign to it a unique identifier, a GUID, and we push it into a queue. And then it gets consumed on the other side by the worker. And so obviously what we gain here is, is also twofold. It's First of all, we gain decentralization. Um, so the web server maintains its concerns of serving the API requests, while we can sort of separate the query itself to a background worker and, and then that leads us to the second uh, goal that we're achieving is that we can now do sort of independent auto-scaling of each side of this diagram. So if I have thousands of web requests incoming and my instance of the web server can handle the load, but the back-end query workers can't, then we can auto-scale just the workers. 
All right, step number three is locking. This is, I find this one to be the most interesting step. Um, so once the query worker has consumed a message and it's about to perform the query um, with the data warehouse that's on the right-hand side over there, it's a small image, um, the first thing we do is that we, we acquire a lock in Redis. And there are two reasons that we do that. Is first is resilience, because we don't want to thrash the data warehouse with tons of, of, of concurrent uh, queries. And the second thing is, what I find the most interesting and challenging part is that since Datarama is uh, a multi-tenant platform, which means that all the customers have their data stored on the same infrastructure and on the same storage. Um, and so we want to avoid the situation where we have a noisy neighbor, or in other words, a customer that is sending tons of requests concurrently and then sort of hogging all the resources, all the query workers, and starving all the other customers. So the locks are on a per customer basis. And if I extend that a bit, it's not exactly a lock, it's actually a semaphore. So for example, if I'm, if I'm a Datarama customer, my account could have, say, 10, an, a semaphore of size 10. So I have 10 permits I can acquire, which means I can concurrently perform 10 queries on the data warehouse. And just one more word about the data warehouse, the little, the tiny icon on the right-hand side that you see. Well, it looks small in, in, in the diagram, but in practice, it's a monster. So this, behind the scenes, this is a huge warehouse. It has 30 different shards. Uh, each shard is deployed across six nodes. These are really big machines on Amazon, petabyte scale data, so it's, it's a big operation. And, and eventually what we achieve as a company is that we can query the data in sub-second times. Okay, so fourth step is that, once again, since we're building a fail-safe system, if acquiring the lock in step number three failed, then what we do is we throttle the message, uh, the, the message stream that's incoming, or in other words, we're re-offering the message back to the queue with a certain delay that we assign to it. And we're using a Fibonacci strategy delay, uh, uh, delay that, which means that actually every time a message comes back from the queue and we need to re-offer it to sort of delay it more, then we're increasing the delay a bit until we reach a sort of a maximum uh, retry, um, a, a max threshold of retries that, that from there on we just don't perform the query. But that sort of gives us another level of resilience. And the main thing actually that we're gaining here is congestion management. So if, once again, if we have a burst of, of queries that are incoming, then we can sort of manage and balance the load, ease it over time, and, and eventually perform all the queries, even if it'll take just a bit more than a few seconds. So step number five, final step, is once we've acquired the lock, we've performed the data warehouse query, and now we want to return the, the response back to the, to the customer. So first of all, we're going to put the, the response back in the cache. That's not up in the illustration, but I'm saying that out loud. And what we're doing is we're pub subbing, we're, we're actually uh, publishing the, the, the result back on a pub sub topic back to the web server. Now, the reason we're using a pub sub here and not a queue is that we need full coordination between the web server instance that sent us the query and that same instance needs to, to get the response back. And the reason for that is, is that the customer is connected probably via WebSocket. And so WebSockets are a stateful connection. Once a browser opens a uh, stateful connection uh, with one of the web server instances and triggers a query, then we need to return the result to the exact same web instance and back to the client. So both the web server and the query worker at this step are sort of coordinating between each other on a pub sub topic, which is the unique identifier which I mentioned in step two when we were queuing the message with, with some kind of unique ID. And so that's what we're gaining here. We're gaining um, immediate feedback to the client. By the way, the previous mechanism here, before we had WebSockets and we weren't pub subbing, is that we would just put the message, the result of the query back in the cache, and we would have the clients, the web, the, the web browsers actually pull us every second or every two seconds for the result, which is a bit less responsive and it's not as good of a user experience as what we have now. So that pretty much covers it. It's one flow in the system that all the queries go through, five different use cases where they go through. Um, and Redis has been phenomenal in this. Uh, we're, really we're really proud and happy with the solution we have in place. We don't need, we're pretty much independent of any other uh, technology or vendor or cloud vendor and it works really seamlessly. All the errors or problems we've tackled in the past year weren't related to Redis and this flow or they were <laughs> mostly about the application code. Um, that's it. Shameless plug, we're hiring. Uh, Datarama, in my opinion, is solving some of the toughest challenges in terms of distributed systems and architectures. We're handling pretty huge loads and scale, and occasionally we hang out at the beach. So you guys are welcome to join. You can ping me or reach out wherever you want, whenever you want. Check out our engineering blog, engineeringdatarama.com. That's it. Thank you.